Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Matt's Minis. Today we are reading Swamp Thing number 72. And uh, if you remember on the last one, John Constantine and Swamp Thing are working together in order to create the new Swamp Thing in order to take old Swamp Thing's place. Uh, so they were working together to try to get uh, the body for that sprite. But unfortunately, Constantine didn't tell Swamp Thing all of his plan. And Swamp Thing ended up taking the soul of the guy that was supposed to be the new Swamp Thing, which fucked it all up and made it so uh, that didn't work. Now that guy couldn't become the new Swamp Thing. We see the cover here is pretty awesome looking. We got a giant Swamp Thing plant that kind of looks like a, I don't know, like it's a giant tree. And uh, there's a flaming man standing in front of him, like, like a man that's just perfectly on fire uh burning but uh he's looking directly at swamp thing's face so we start off on the first page and the first page is uh the parliament of trees and they are very um i guess angry and upset at everything that's been happening they and, and this is one thing i didn't know the, the there was like four other parliament members of the parliament of trees that were you know past swamp things that were trying to convince Swamp Thing to take his place and to kill the sprite originally. And Swamp Thing didn't want to do that. And in that process, he like rejected them and used the new abilities he got from going to space to like break free of their trance. And I didn't know that this actually killed them, but apparently it did. Like it, the, the parliament is saying like, we lost four members that day. And, uh, <laughs> So apparently when Swamp Thing was like, nope, I'm out of here, uh, he just murdered four ancient past spirits. So now the parliament's like, wait, our wisdom, like, cause the, basically the parliament, parliament of trees gets all of its wisdom from all the past Swamp Things, and it just lost four lifetimes worth of wisdom in the ones that died. So they're kind of pissed, and they're like, you know what, fuck this. We gotta get rid of this renegade, it is, this is like... He will, he will too much power. So then we cut to John Constantine, who... This is what he always does every issue so far. <laughs> he finds a bunch of friends that can help him out, and he asks their opinion about what's going to happen, and then that tells him something he's got to do, and he figures out what he needs to do. But this one's just like that, where uh, he's talking to his friend Brenda, who he's talked to previously. She was the Native American friend of his that uh, is able to divine things from, like, animal carcasses so he brings her a gopher or whatever that, that i guess he found or something and uh she's able to divine that something really bad's gonna happen like always in these comics and uh <laughs> and then we cut to abby arcane who is in her like tree house that swamp thing has grown for them and she's just sleeping i guess after the last little tryst her and swamp thing had before he left and Swamp Thing begins to grow next to her, and it's funny because he always surprises her. All these vines just shoot out of the ground and, like, wrap around her and stuff, and then all of a sudden she's hugging the body of Swamp Thing. And so, last she heard, they, she was waiting for basically the, the man on the plane to become the new Swamp Thing, and then our Swamp Thing could retire officially, and they could just be in this wonderful life together for the rest of their lives. And uh, she asks, oh, ba oh, you're back. Like, how'd it go? And Swamp Thing says, another failure, I'm afraid. And she's like, what do you mean? I thought the Sprout and you had a body and it was supposed to turn out good. And he's like, there was an airplane crash. Over 300 people died. And she's like, wait, what? Like, I thought, you know, this was just or ordained or whatever. But uh, basically he explains that Constantine knows about or knew about this and set it up. And she's like, oh, he's so terrible, and I hate that man. But interestingly, Swamp Thing actually stands up for him and is like, look, these things are supposed to happen. They're, like, fated. So we can't really judge what he does because he's just helping fate along kind of thing. So he says, certain events in the lives of humans 
are fated to occur. Any attempt to divert such dynamic potency causes even greater calamity. So basically he's saying, we can't really stop what is already in motion because it's like fate. So like, don't go too hard on Constantine. And then he goes on to tell her that because the sprite has had so many false starts, it's actually being corrupted by each of the like personalities or uh, I guess lives of these people. And so it's it's having a hard time because it had originally been Solomon Grundy that it was trying to possess. And then it was the white nationalist domestic terrorist. So that definitely wasn't a good personality to uh, get a bunch of traits from. And so, yeah, basically he's just worried that whatever they continue to do, it's going to, if it fails, it's going to corrupt him even further. Uh, and then we cut this to... Uh, John Constantine, who is talking to another one of his friends. And this is interesting. His friend is some kind of, you know, computer nerd or whatever, but he he built a program, and this is like 1988, keep in mind. So, so uh, he built a program on his computer that can aggregate, uh, I guess, the, the dreams of people who put them out on, it's not even the internet because it's the 80s, so whatever network his computer is hooked to uh basically the people have dreams if they're fucked up or whatever they're putting them out on there like like live journaling them or something and then it's aggregating all of them and making it so they they're all like together based on what they're talking about and and that way you can like divine things that are happening to a bunch of people around the world so like he's saying everybody's uh having terrible dreams about nuclear reactors um, and then dinosaurs grazing through fields and pooping out radioactive waste. And then there's a woman who had a dream about Mother Earth being raped by a deranged Uncle Sam. And, uh, and But the one thing that's interesting is all of them say something about Sunderland Corporation. So definitely something's happening there. And then we cut to... <laughs> And this is funny. I don't know why he uh, decided to do this other than just it's a joke. But he keeps bringing up the uh, guys who are stuck in the car with the false start swamp thing. So the guy that be was going to originally become the swamp thing, who is the white nationalist domestic terrorist dude. He was a failed swamp thing, but he, he was possessed by the sprite long enough to actually make a body that looks like a fucked up swamp thing he looks more like something from like creep show or one of those like tales from the crypt shows but he, he's just like he looks like a crypt keeper but with you know a plant body and he in that issue uh like hijacked a car and would just started driving it and then in the car is like a famous actor and his assistant so uh, there was a whole side story of that. But basically, it starts off this page with saying, day seven. And, and it's like the, the assistant is narrating this whole page where he's like, he won't let us leave. <laughs> the, the, the monster is just driving and has been driving for seven days. Luckily, we had enough food in the wet bar and the mini bar in the, in the car uh, to be at least hydrated and uh, well fed, but that's only going to last for the next seven days or whatever. And so it's like uh, a really funny um, like journal of what's been happening in the back of this car. He even says uh, one of the grossest things is he's like Roy's teeth fell out and he looks terrible because I guess Roy is like an older actor who's past his prime, so he had dentures. And he's like, and when they fell out, they they fell onto the floor. And you don't want to pick up anything that's been on the floor. And I realize that that's supposed to be, basically, they're just, you know, shitting all over the floor of the car in the middle or whatever. Because it's a limousine with, like, a, a wraparound seat in the back and everything. So, <laughs> so like, yeah, they're, they're just stuck with this guy. And uh, he it says, like, he's smart and crafty. Like, when he figured out how to lock all the doors and windows and he took our credit cards. He only buys gas at night when the attendants can't see inside through the tinted glass. Then he turns up the stereo so loud that they can't hear us scream. Uh, and so basically, yeah, like he just rolls down the window barely and shoves the credit card through. And then there's a gas attendant who fills up the car for them. So he's been able to basically take these, these guys hostage for seven days and no one knows it. Uh, so that's just like a, a funny story they keep throwing in here. 
And then we cut to Constantine, who's at another friend's. And uh, this is like an acupuncturist that he's been to previously as well. And she's... And she's doing some kind of ancient method of divination uh, where she, like, I don't know, has these coins and then writes out what's what she sees in them. So she reads the text, and it says, The fire springs from hiding. The earth in ferment. The superior man halts all action. Thus, the hidden will of heaven is triumphant. When the perfect center becomes a maelstrom, even the righteous may be drawn into the heart. Beware. And Constantine's like, well, that's pin. That gives me pins and needles. And of course, he's got all these acupuncture needles in his face and hands and everything. <laughs> so it's kind of a a stupid, funny joke he makes there. Then we cut back to Swamp Thing and Abby, and they're talking about like why the failure happened, and um, they're just trying to like brainstorm on how can we get this, you know, sprite a body, you know, and and also like a good body. We don't want it to be like a terrible. Uh, mass murder or swamp thing or whatever so um they're talking and swamp thing basically says like look we've been trying so hard and i'm not sure there's a solution i'm not sure if i'm smart enough to like come up with something to fix this and abby's like what you're you were from like alec holland and alec holland was a you know brilliant scientist and he's like no no you don't understand yes alec was a brilliant scientist but I am actually from his body that was blown up and burned. So the brain I got was not his full scientific brilliant mind or whatever. It was like the uh, brain damage from a concussion, uh, for at least from a blast uh, to the face because the bomb went off like right in his face. And, uh, and then, you know, the rushing into the fire and flames and all that pain and everything and all the adrenaline that was going through his body, that's what's in his mind. That's, that is the mind he inherited. So he does not have the ability to really, uh, solve problems like that. And then we cut to Swamp Thing, who's talking to, uh, a kid he had talked to in the last couple of issues who was like autistic and he's really, really good at math. So Constantine goes to him to calculate their chances of success in the next guy becoming uh, the Swamp Thing correctly and it being like a good mission where everything goes right. And the kid's like, uh, there is a 94% possibility of failure. So whatever you're planning on doing, don't do that. And then, uh, so then we cut back to Swamp Thing. It's time for me to go. I am supposed to meet Constantine. Uh, we have to attend to this little matter of creating the new Swamp Thing. So he got a little hope from talking to her, I guess. But um, he says, you know what? This time I, I can't just uh, send my body there or whatever. I'm actually just going to go in spirit form. And so he's like, I got to drop a little extra baggage. And he's like, body explodes, but his spirit is there. And she can actually see him. She's like, oh, my gosh, I've never seen you like this. You're so beautiful. And she sees like his aura just sitting around floating near her. And um he's like okay time to go off and so him and the sprite fly away then we come back to john constantine who is with another friend now this is the uh tribal looking guy uh, maybe like a medicine man or something um and he's like painting on cave walls and what he's painting is abby arcane breastfeeding an infant so I guess Constantine maybe was like, okay, if this next guy is supposed to be like 94% failure, what can we do? And uh, basically it looks like maybe Abby Arcane is supposed to become pregnant. Um, And then we cut to the meat and potatoes of this issue. We are introduced to a man who is waking up starting his day, but this guy is not a nice guy. Uh, He has a wife and a child, and uh, it just starts off with the baby crying and we see his inner thoughts during this whole wake up morning process. So it says, babies wail like a starter's gun. And his wife's like, Alden? And he's like, wife blubbering again. And then, he, and then she's like, he, he had me up all night again. And Alden's thinking, up, 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 empty bladder. And he goes to take a piss. And then he's like, suit up. And then she's like, I'm so tired, Alden. And he's like, ignore, ignore. And basically he just completely blanks his wife the entire morning as she's like hey can you take the baby for a second 
But instead of doing that, he uh, goes for a run. And while he's running, he's talking or he's thinking about, the, you know, he's got a big day today. And he's going before the board with those with the rat night proposal. So um, this is like his big day to do this presentation. And it's going to hopefully get him like a big promotion. And we see as he's running back into his house that uh, his name is Hollandaise, like on his mailbox. So his name is Alan Al, or Alden Hollandaise. So obviously this, just from his name, is supposed to be the next Swamp Thing. Uh, we also see that his shirt when he's running says, he who dies with the most toys wins. So he's very materialistic, I guess. And uh, he goes back into his house, changes. His wife's talking to him the entire time. And he's just completely ignoring her. He literally doesn't even say one word to her the entire morning. He just leaves. And uh, he gets in his car. And, of course, he almost gets hit by the car that's being driven by the fucked up uh, aborted swamp thing. And then we see, where is he going? But he's going to the Sunderland building. So he works for Sunderland. If you remember, Constantine's friend said something bad is happening at Sunderland. So... Uh, he's talking about how awesome his Radonite presentation is going to be, and uh, hopefully they like it, and hopefully it goes well, but he knows it's probably going to go well. And as he comes into the office, everybody uh, is, like, smiling or looking crazy at him, like, winking and kind of talking behind his back, and he's like, what? what's wrong? What's going on? And as he gets into his office, he opens the door and sees there's... 400 bags of radonite <laughs> it turns out what radonite is is um something that he created that's like he had to pay off the government to to make or to allow but basically it's fertilizer that is made from uh, toxic waste of like nuclear reactors so instead of just putting that waste inside of like a mountain or whatever for a thousand years until it decays all the way uh, he's like, wait, why don't we just like grind it up and spread it across like many millions of bags of fertilizer and no one will even know. It's fine, you know? Uh, so Such little trace amounts, nothing bad could happen to the food supply or anything. So uh, that was his idea. So that's, what, that's the pitch he's going with to get rid of all this waste. And so basically they'll make money on the waste now instead of having to pay to store it. They're going to turn it into a product called the Radonite Fertilizer. And he ordered one bag of it for the presentation, but what he actually did was ordered one pallet of it. So he actually got like a thousand pounds of this stuff. And when they came to deliver it, everybody in the office was like, yeah, just put it in this dude's office. So like you said, his office is now full of this Radonite Fertilizer. <laughs> so... As he walks in, he's all pissed off, and and, make, and everybody's laughing at him and making fun of, fun of him. And uh, he slams the door, and he sits down. He's like, what am I going to do? What's my next move? And then all of a sudden, he hears someone talking to him, and it's Constantine. Of course, Constantine having uh, investigated Sunderland after his friend had that uh, divination about it, uh, he found, oh, the, of course, there's someone named Alden Hollandaise. That's got to be the Swamp Thing. So he is here and we're not exactly sure what why he's here but obviously we know this guy is not a good guy so alden says what are you doing in my office and constantine replies waiting for you and alden is like freaking out he's like in his mind he's like attack 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 identify cia kgb ddi like he's he's going through everything that this guy could be because he's worried that you know he's going to get caught and go to jail or he's going to get fired or whatever so we ask Constantine, are you with internal security? And Constantine's like, no, nah, I answer to a higher power. And you are a man of destiny. Did you know that, Alden? Of course you didn't. You want a cigarette? And then he passes Alden a pack of cigarettes and a lighter. And uh, Alden's confused. He's like, wait, what are you talking about? I don't understand any of this. And Constantine, Constantine says, I'm talking about fate. I mean... You work for Sunderland Corp. Your name's Alden Hollandays, and here's your office, unexpectedly filled with tons of dirt. It all makes perfect sense. At least it did until I found this report on your desk. Hmm, it's a study on Radonite. Uh, this is this is some kind of joke, right? I mean, 
No one would market a fertilizer that was laced with lead, mercury, cobalt, cadmium, uranium, radium, thorium, or arsenic. Uh, a fertilizer that was in fact manufactured from recycled nuclear waste. And then he pauses and uh, he's like, it's got to be a joke. And Alden doesn't know what to make of this at first, but then he's, he's going through all these thoughts in his head as Constantine's talking. Uh, and he's like, he's like, who is this guy? Unless, of course, yes, the word must be out. Yes, they want me. Yes, he's a corporate headhunter. So he thinks that Constantine, have, you know, knowing all this information about his Radonite, and is actually impressed with uh, him and wants to give him a promotion or something like that. So he relaxes and uh, he's like, oh, yeah. And he kind of goes on a, a little rant about, oh, this is a brilliant scheme. And yeah, of course, I came up with this idea. And what else are we going to do? And it's just a little nuclear waste. It's not going to be a problem at all. Uh, the farmers won't even know. And as he's talking, he's lighting the cigarette that Constantine gave him. He flicks the lighter a couple times. And on the third or fourth time, it literally explodes in his hand. And he bursts into flames. He begins running around his office. In his head, it's like yelling, fire, fire, pain, stop it, stop it, stop it. And then he like runs into one of the stacks of radonite uh, as he's burning alive. And it falls on him. I don't know if it makes the flames continue to burn or burn hotter. But Constantine isn't like doing anything. He totally seems very nonchalant. Like he knew this was going to happen. And he says out loud gotta watch that driving ambition alden it can lead to burnout (laughs) so it's very obvious that he had planned that to happen once he maybe once he read the file on him um but then he pulls out the little carrot that looks like a swamp thing it kind of is the beacon for swamp thing to come get the new body um but that's not what happens constantine throws that carrot down a waste chute to go be incinerated and just as he does that, uh, Swamp Thing and the Sprite like appear together, their spirits, and uh, they're following this carrot. He's like, I know that's the beacon. I'm going to be- get a new body for you, Sprite. And <laughs> he doesn't know that the body is gone and done and burned up already. And there's nothing to, to get. So he's following this carrot down the waste chute, and it goes all the way down to the basement. And he follows it all the way to an incinerator. Uh, where he says, I find flames in evidence, but no human souls. And he keeps walking around, and he sees a door, and he goes through it, and it says, cryogenic unit on the door. Uh, And he says, no elementals are borning in these sterile corridors. Only the chill nostalgia of an earlier nativity. Because this is where he was actually uh, frozen and reborn in the Alan Moore run. Uh, in the first issue of that. Uh, And then it says, and the frozen corporate remains of old ghosts. And he sees a drawer in the cryogenic unit that says Sunderland, and he pulls it open, and we see that the body of Sunderland is actually there in frozen storage. So uh, Sunderland, who he killed in that same issue, he was reborn and frozen and all that stuff. Um, That is like his main bad guy from back in the day it turns out he is cryogenically frozen here and then we cut to the parliament of trees and they're uh talking in this giant valley and talking to each other about the situation of what's going on and what they need to do and it says in blind desperation the wood reaches reaches back to its earliest progenitors the pre-human the pre-mammal and the mind that haunts the foliage of the world slowly, carefully unlocks. In, in a rainforest glade near the mouth of the Teffy River, something vaguely reptilian extracts its 200 million year old tendrils from the gumbo soil. Ignoring the envy of those left rooted, it lumbers viciously and free into the sodden haze. And we see this giant dinosaur-like plant being. Uh, So this is like the first Swamp Thing or something. (laughs) The primordial Swamp Thing that has been risen to figure out everything, maybe kill Alec Holland Swamp Thing, and maybe even the Sprites, whichever. 
But we will have to wait and see in the next issue what happens. That is it for this one. And uh, if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email me at Planes, Trains, and Comic Books, all one word at gmail.com. And until next time, stay swampy.